Hi everyone, it's Kim. I'm really sorry about the quality of this video. Um, I do definitely need a phone. <laughs> I need a new phone and I promise I will try to, uh, to, uh, to, to do that. Although, I'm sure actually it's, it's fine. You can, as long as you can hear me, then, then that's okay. Right, so today, um, I wanted to chat to you about, and I know we always talk about this, but it's about taking baby steps. And what, um, hi Stacy. good to have you on, hope you're well. Um, uh, yeah, baby steps. Okay, so, it's just about um, talking about basically where you are now. It's about being aware of where you are now, what's going on in your life. And, you know, the reality that if you're not happy, you need to do something to try and change things because it's not about waiting for anybody else to, to sort of to, to make things better for you at the end of the day the only person that's going to make things better for you is you and I know that sounds really rubbish and, and um, you know that you're the one in charge of this and you're the one that has to do the work but that is totally true um, so yeah so if you are not happy, and I know it's kind of a very conflicted place where we are because, you know, often we could admit to ourselves, we can be aware that we're not happy, but it feels scary to, to do anything different or maybe we've tried something different and it hasn't worked in the past. Um, so there's the thing of, you know, is there really any point? Um, but that's only going to serve to keep you in the same place. So... To me, it's it's almost like having, um, you know, having a plan. You know, it's about if you were in business and you wanted to build a business, you know, you would look at where you are now, you would look at where you want to be, your objectives, your goals, etc. And then you would have a plan, a strategy, um, you know, to, to sort of like to take, you know, to try and take you there. Um but at first, but you have to have that plan. You have to have that goal of of where you end want to end up. Because how will you know whether you've got there? Um, and if you're not sure what you're aiming for, then obviously that's harder to to get wherever it is. So it, and also it helps a lot with um, motivation. You know, to have a goal helps with your motivation to sort of like to strive for for something. Because let's face it, it is really difficult, isn't it? It's a hard place, and and trying to fight against the voice in your head, it's really, really wearing. It ties you down. Um, it's just, oh, you know. I remember the sort of like the voice in my head screaming at me, and um, and that's hard to fight against. You know, sometimes it's it's almost like having. Um, it's not the same, but. Like, you know, if you've got a toddler that is, um, you know, t constantly screaming for attention and, and demanding, etc. Um, you know, the easiest thing is to give them what they want. You know, it's easiest to give them what they want. It's a short term fix is to just do as they want. But then it's like, as the saying goes, it's like making a rod for your own back. Um, you know, because then that child gets used to the fact that you kind of will just let them do whatever they want and, you know, they can get away with things and stuff. And it's a little bit the same, you know, so you have to, and, and although it's easier, I know it's easier to just kind of like give in to Anna and do, you know, do what she wants, but actually at the end of the day, that doesn't help in the long term. You know this, you know this, although I do, I, I get it, it's really, really hard. Um, okay, so the first thing is admitting that you're not happy, then realising that it needs to be you that needs to try and change this, you know, where do you want to be? Um, and again, this could be, you know, talk in terms of recovery, because obviously that's what we're talking about here, but this will go towards any area of your life you know if you're not happy with anything you know you need to think about what it is that you're not happy with what you'd ideally like and then think about what changes you need to make in order to get there 
and sometimes we're not actually sure what it is that um, you know what changes are going to be helpful for us what op you know w how we're going to do it but then that's the next step you know it's like and I always say don't you know don't kind of like run before you can walk um, you know it, it is about taking those baby steps um, you know so look like looking at where you are where you want to get to and thinking about what might help you to get there and as I say you know often we might not know but it's about you know researching your options seeing what's available out there that might be able to help you it might involve trying a few things you know and some might help more than others some might be absolutely no-nos um, but that's okay that's progress because you're closer to finding out um, the one that will work for you because there will be something you know or somebody that you connect to some sort of like technique that they use or some sort of you know um, practice that they use that you connect to, to that will start to help you but you need to be committed you need to be motivated and that's where the goal comes in um, to kind of like keep aiming towards you know and as I always say recovery is I don't even you know we talk about recovery I'm not even sure I'm convinced of that word because you know when I was trying to get better you know recovery kind of in, in my mind's eye I had this vision of me being big and and kind of you know with everybody going oh you're all right now so you know you can you know and and just judgment from people people thinking that I was okay when I was not and lots of different things so but to me recovery is all about me feeling better about myself you know about feeling confident about feeling um, able to cope so I don't need to sort of use the behaviors that I've been using um, you know to feel positive about myself to actually like and even maybe love myself you know to appreciate the the qualities that I have you know that and that that friends like you know friends friends don't see me and go oh you know she looks really good I'll you know that's that's why they want to be spend time with me or you know to sort of like be with me that's not why I've got friends it's because of the inner qualities that I have you know I like to think that I'm a good listener I'm you know can be quite fun um, you know I can be a bit naughty and a bit mad at occasions but then that's not a bad thing is it you know um, yeah it's about you know it's about me it's about my personality um, and that's what will kind of like you know draw you to long-term relationships so yeah it's whatever you want to call it you know you don't have to call it recovery if that doesn't you know sit well with you it's just about feeling better what do I want to feel like how do I want to feel in myself and aim towards that you know just whatever feels right for you and I know sometimes it can be hard to visualize and you know and to see yourself as that person but you know with our imagination we're very good at creating the the uh, you know kind of pretty pretty unreal sort of scenarios usually negative so why not think of some really way out there you know use your best imagination to come up with the kind of person that you would like to be don't worry about what you know how you're going to get there or anything like that but just have that focus um, and as I say don't think big you know because that can just feel so overwhelming it's too much hard work and you'll just give up you know at, at the at the first hurdle so it's about you know say you've got a project for work or something like that and um, you know you wouldn't just sort of like have you know the just the title written down and then be expected to just do it you'd break it down into little pieces you know little chunks little tasks and you'd tick them off as you went to sort of like show yourself what progress you were making you know that you were kind of like getting towards your goal you know closer and closer um, and that's what helps and I know that it can feel scary well not it can it does feel scary 
along the way and there's all sorts of emotions, all sorts of guilt, but it's about finding out coping mechanisms, coping strategies. Um, you know, as I've said, EFT really helped me. Um, mindfulness really, really helped me. Um, meditation, I know um, uh, yoga has been um, mentioned on here and I have, you know, a really good friend um, that does pranayama yoga and um, and that, you know, that's really good. There's lots of different yogas, but I think pranayama yoga is, is very good um, for, for, for anorexia. Um, yeah, med meditation, there's Reiki, and I know that's been mentioned here. So I think it was Annette mentioned about um, Reiki. And Stacey, I think you mentioned, was it your aunt that's um, into Reiki? Um, yeah, all these things can, you know, can help. So it's about, you know, do a bit of research, try some things, you know, use it as an experiment to see what's going to help and what's not. Um, because it's all, you know, getting you to, to kind of like go towards that end goal. Um, yeah, so I just kind of like wanted to, to talk to you about that today. So don't think big, don't get overwhelmed by it and think about all the blocks that you have that are, you know, that is stopping you. And I know the biggest one for, you know, the biggest one for me and from everything I've read in the group and everybody that I've talked to, clients, etc., it is around the fear, you know, and um, fear of losing control, fear of gaining weight. But like I said, you know, if you find some strategies, some coping mechanisms to help you deal with that along the way, then... I mean, I have clients who come to me and they're terrified, you know, absolutely terrified and they are, they do have motivation, but it's not sort of like 10 out of 10, you know, it's kind of middle of the road. They are conflicted, but they have some motivation and they, you know, they kind of like sign up and they sign up to agree to do the work, they do the work, do the homework that I set them. And for one, the ones that do the homework, do what I ask them to do, they they get better, you know, they feel better. I mean, it takes a while, you know, I'm not going to, you know, as I always say, it's not a quick fix, um, no magic wands here, but, you know, after a few weeks, they do start to feel better. Um, you know, it doesn't feel um, as huge as it did, and gradually, and gradually, and gradually, it all starts to kind of get better. Um, and so to me, that's, you know, as sort of like I experienced it, it is really worth it. It's worth putting in that effort to to kind of like get yourself feeling better. And you just got to think whether it's worth it to you. And I know it's sometimes, you know, not as easy as, well, do you want it or not and, and stuff, because actually... You need to decide that you want it a lot of the time of the day. You know, that's the thing. It's not just a one-off decision that, you know, yeah, I want it, and then that's it. You have to keep wanting this. And it is hard, and I'm not saying that it's not, but it's not impossible. You know, I've, I'm kind of proof. My clients are proof. There's a lot of, you know, people out there that have recovered. You know, and they all say that their life is is better off. And you know that thing that I was saying about, or, you know, I, I don't want people to think that I'm okay, so they start to kind of treat me differently again. Maybe they give me extra responsibility, or maybe, I don't know, they sort of start thinking I'm okay around me or some stuff, and I'm not. When you are truly feel better about yourself, when you truly got rid of all this stuff going on in your head, that won't matter, because you will be better you will feel better, you will feel able to cope, you won't mind kind of taking, you'll be ready to kind of like change things in your life because you'll feel ready for that change you'll, and it will be a positive thing, it won't be a negative thing, it won't feel so scary. Um, and not one person, and I've read lots of different things about different people kind of, um, you know, recovering, um, and there's not been one person that I've read that's kind of like, oh, 
you know, I hate this and, um, you know, and it's been not worth it, etc. Only the people that, ha you know, are not, that their mindset isn't fixed. It's only them because they're still fighting against the food, the weight, the eating, all the different behaviours that they are struggling with. You know, it's like their mindset is still the same. That's the only people that I know that want to go back because they still have those urges. But once you deal with your mindset, you feel good. You really, really feel good. Um, and you don't need that to, to cope or anything. So, I hope that's helped a bit. Let me just, uh, Stacy, struggling and just plain exhausted. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's and it is hard to see a way out, isn't it? And you're not quite sure what to do for the best. Um, you know, you don't know which way to turn. There's kind of, you know, you don't even know whether it's possible. But it's really worth trying for, you know. It's 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 not good to be staying where you are. I can understand. I understand that because I did as well, you know, and I had to hit rock bottom to kind of my, move back up again. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't, I don't regret, you know, kind of like going for it at all. And you know what, and the reason I can say my mindset is better and the difference between me and somebody who says that they're recovered but their mindset is still the same is that I can, I can remember the nightmare that anorexia was that I felt I remember it all um, but okay and I, I'll tell you now I feel thankful that I had I, that I went through all that I feel thankful that I had anorexia I wasn't I certainly wasn't blooming thankful for it at the time definitely wasn't thankful but because my mindset has changed I look back now feeling much better about myself and I can honestly say I am grateful for that crappy time because it spurred me, it pushed me forward, it made me get out of a place where I, even before the anorexia, I didn't feel great about myself, you know, I still, I had loads of stuff, loads of negativities, you know, which were, okay, I didn't have the anorexia, but my life was affected, you know, I had a lot of anxieties, um, Stacey did, I absolutely hated myself, absolutely, I just, oh, I really, and you can see in my face now that I remembered, um, I thought I was the, I was my enemy, I was my absolute enemy, I couldn't, you know, I sort of, I couldn't see what any why anybody else would would kind of like want me around in their lives I couldn't see why you know my daughters would love me um I couldn't I couldn't see I can't stand myself right now yeah and I, do you know what though Stacey I think that is very typical and that is Anna that is Anna convinced of you convincing you of that those voices in your head telling you that, you know, you hate yourself, because then it's easier, isn't it? It's easier to wear you down, it's easier to control you, because that's what she ultimately wants, she wants to destroy you, no two ways about it, absolutely, being totally truthful right now, she wants to destroy you, so you either let her, or you have to start fighting. You know, you have to choose another way. You know, it feels like you're drowning, isn't it? It feels like you're drowning and you're treading water and you're tired. You know, you're tired of keeping treading water. And sometimes it can be quite, you know, you can feel like, well, maybe if I just stopped a little and get dragged down with this. You know? And unfortunately, that's a lot of, a lot of people do that. You know, as, as I've said before, anorexia has the highest kind of mortality rate, you know, sort of, um, for people kind of like taking their own lives, it kills a lot of people, um, but there are, you, 
if you could only I was very like I said I was my own enemy and I saw myself in so so harsh a way I couldn't possibly see it any any differently you know it didn't matter what anybody said to me no it wasn't going to happen I was convinced that I was the worst person in the world and I built up all sorts of kind of like evidence to support that um and so, but now if I look back, you know, if I kind of step out of that, you can see, really see very clearly what actually your life is like. You know, if you see it objectively, if you change your mindset, and you will see that you have so much to live for, you have so much positives in your life, even though it feels like rubbish and you maybe didn't have the, the, the best childhood and you didn't you know, and things are still tough for you now, you know, all of these stuff, you know, they can all be dealt with, they can all be dealt with, and, okay, so maybe it's not about your past, but your future, you know, you have the potential to have a brilliant future, as long as you get rid of this, as long as you can see that potential, okay, Maureen, hi Maureen, um, watching still have it at 67 oh bless you you never recover from and you always have the thoughts it's part of you forever yeah i can see what you're saying with that but i i disagree actually i think i feel like i'm i'm a volcano okay and at the moment like the lava in me is very dormant okay and if i hit because it's always stress with me you know um but if i hit a stressful period in my life i know you know i've i've kind of been there i've seen the signs i know and i have a choice again you know i have a choice to go back to start restricting or i have a choice to deal with it and i know that i could if i decided today that i wanted to go back you know if for some reason I don't know, I decided, oh, I'm not sure actually I would, but, but anyway, if, if I wasn't, if my mindset was still the same then, I'm talking about sort of on my road to recovery then, if my mindset was still at the same where I had those negative thoughts, and those negative beliefs, etc, um, all those past events were still bothering me, it would be very easy to go back to old behaviours, so, so easy, back in a heartbeat, I, you know, Losing weight was never an issue. It was all, you know, pretty straightforward. And so at the moment, I have, like I say, I have that volcano inside me and the lava is very dormant. But if there any ever becomes a period of stress in my life, I know about it and I start tapping. I use those coping... And for you, it might not be EFT. It might be something else that, you know, that we've mentioned, the mindfulness yoga, whatever it is, it's about using those coping mechanisms to deal with the stress right then, right there, so that then, sort of like, you know, if the lava sort of starts to kind of like, starts to ripple, starts to kind of, you know, rather than letting it erupt, use the coping mechanisms to bring it back down so you feel okay, and you're okay, and so, I don't, you know, I think that a lot of people think that they're recovered because they learn to eat again. You know, things are different for them. You know, they've, they've learned to eat. But eating disorders aren't about eating and it isn't about weight and, and stuff. Although, obviously, that's huge symptoms at the time and it very much feels like that's the problem. But the root stuff is, is a lot deeper. And... Um, and I think if you deal with those roots, that root stuff, that root, you know, those root issues, then you can actually um, get better. You know, you can, you don't have to have those, those thoughts. Because what can happen is that if you think that, oh, well, I've just kind of, you know, I can eat now, whereas I didn't before, that's not recovery. Because, you know, what often happens is that you have somebody anorexic that will go to bulimic or go to binge eating disorder, or binge eating disorder to bulimia to anorexia, and it can go in a whole different cycle. Or, 
you might not use food at all. So, you know, so you can be really in denial about that. Oh, everything's fine because, you know, I've got not a problem with food so much now. But you might start drinking a lot more. Or you might start using other addictions and stuff in order to cope. But once, like I said, once you deal with that stuff, then you don't need that crutch or that behaviour to kind of like feel like you're coping with. Um, so, um, Maureen, I totally understand. Um, and maybe it is that you are, you know, you said that you still have it at 67. Well, that's that's a huge part of your, of your life. And um, I'm sorry to hear that you're still struggling with this. Um, and maybe there's some still some kind of like mindset issues, some past stuff that you need to try and, you know, deal with. Even if you think that you've dealt with them and you've sorted them. I've had clients come to me and said, oh, yeah, there was this, but I've, I've worked on it now. But when we've kind of gone gone into it with the tapping, they're still, they're still reacting to it. They're still in feeling stuff about it. It's still not gone. So, um, but they're just, you know, and like I said, just because you're eating that's managing it, you know, you're still sticking to a, you know, a meal plan, like it's, you know, you have to grasp it, otherwise that, you know, it, that's it, that, that's just managing it, it's, that's not proper, you know, what I would class as recovery, that's about feeling better, okay, um, Stacy, she's winning currently, bless you, Stacy, I know you went, you, you were looking to, um, contact you know your surgeon or your doctor and stuff I think if you're serious um, about this if you seriously you know think that I'm not I mean you know it's not it's not my call obviously it's not caught my call at all I totally understand that it's difficult for you you know it's difficult for us all but if you really want to change things you need to speak to your doctor you know, and I know that your your husband has his issues and stuff with it, and I know I've said you know that it's his reaction and everything to to it all. Um, but at the moment, you're using that as an excuse not to reach out for help, and I know that's quite blunt, isn't it? And I'm sorry about that, but um, that's what's happened. It's another voice to say, oh well, I can't I can't do this because my husband doesn't agree with it. Now imagine if you, I know, I know you like um, to have your. We've chatted and stuff, and you like to. I think it's your your nails done, and you you know you you like sort of like you've got a good old wardrobe and things like that. You know, imagine if you wanted. Um, I don't know if you're into shoes, but imagine there was something like I don't know an item of clothing, or you wanted your nails done, or something like that, and your husband said no, you can't do it. What would you do? Would you listen or would you go and get it anyway? You know, because sometimes if we want something badly enough, we will do it. It doesn't matter how busy we are in our lives or, or anything like that or what's going on. If we haven't got the money, if there's something that we want that badly in our lives, we will make sure that we do it. Is that is that true or am I tr talking nonsense? It's true for me, and it's true for a lot of people that I know. That's all I'm saying. Um, so, yeah. So, if you're serious about this, you need to, to, you know, to speak to somebody. You really do. And I know, you know, sort of like having a an unsupportive husband makes life tricky. I know this. I've, you know, I, I didn't have the best support. And I, do you know what? I felt like my um, husband at the time was... Um, embarrassed by me I really but then I don't know maybe actually when I look back at now maybe it was just because he didn't know how to handle it you know and maybe like he had his own beliefs about what was going on and and things like that um maybe he felt out of control and he didn't like it so there's always a reason why people act in the way that they do so rather than kind of you know taking it on taking it to heart taking on their stuff you need to focus on you and do what's right for you that's how I feel he's embarrassed by me yeah I mean and it can come across as that isn't it but I just wonder whether it is I mean I know I felt like that as well because um, my 
husband didn't want to tell any yeah similar thing actually he didn't want people to know either I you know we would be, be invited to you know sort of like family occasions with all invo involved food and stuff and I'd say to him you know like, can we just, can you just explain, actually, that, that I don't want, you know, I don't want any food, or I'm going to take my own food and stuff, because that feels safer, and that, and he just didn't, well, one, he didn't get it, but how could he possibly get it, um, you know, and, um, and the other, he just wasn't willing to, to, to talk about it, but I think that that was, that is, is his issues, and, you know, at the end of the day, I just had to reach out for help. You know, I remember going to a meeting where I thought if I went to a meeting and I had somebody else kind of explain to him what it felt like, um, then maybe he would understand more. But he was that determined that he knew better, you know, which frustrated the hell out of me, angered me so much, you know. So in the end, at the end of the day, I just took matters in my own and my own hands, um, and uh, and yeah, and I got help. I was, you know, and um, yeah, it's difficult, but you need to. You know, things need to change. You know that things aren't going to go great if you carry on the way that that they are, and so you need to take matters in your into your own hands and contact that doctor. You know, I know. You know you're 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 alone a lot during the day and and things. So there's always the opportunity just to have a phone call. You know there's lots of helplines and things like that. Just speak to somebody, you know, and see and just ask what your options are, you know, and just that's a start. You know, it's just a start. It's an acknowledgement that you know it's the start of that journey. Um, but you know, break it into little steps. Just take it you know, little by little, every day, break up every day into little by little as well, whatever feels more manageable, you know, and it seems to, you know, I always think, it's strange how we, the words that we use, and I know that I actually, even now, I, a lot of my words relate to food and eating, because I always talk about, like, the weight of the responsibility, I talk about sort of breaking things into bite-sized chunks and, you know, lots and lots of, you know, I talk about how things consume me. Um, and it's funny, isn't it, how the word in that you automatically describe um, the things as. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's just because that was where my head was at. Um, okay, it's like taboo to speak of it. Yeah, but um, maybe you just need to push past that taboo, whether it's taboo or not you know that actually it's the right thing to, you know, for you. Um, food scares me altogether. Yeah, it used to scare the crap out of me too. I mean, but it's not actually, it's not the food itself. It's all the guilt and the fear that kind of comes alongside it, isn't it? Um, but yeah, I do know exactly. And it's when we deal with those emotions, like I say, it's when we deal with that, that's when food doesn't seem as scary. <laughs> <clears throat> but it does take a while. Um, feeling like a huge burden. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. Um, I got to that point where I was just so in my own head. You know, I couldn't think of anything but food. I couldn't think of anything but the torture. You know, the voices in my head and stuff. It was like, you know, I had an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other. And, um, you know, and I just thought, gosh... You know, I was, and I was, and I did sort of like, you know, see some friends and stuff like that. But I just, you know, and they would ask me how I was and, and things like that. And I was just like, I'm fed up of talking about me. You know, I'm fed up with kind of like, you know, everybody asking me how I am and stuff. I want to talk about something else. I want to, you know, get away from this just for a little while. You know, I don't, I want to get away from all the stuff that's going on in with me um and but it was really difficult then to kind of like to engage and to kind of like talk to other people because you know making a conversation was such hard work because of all the stuff going on in my head and I did feel like I was a huge burden to to everybody that you know people were better off without me and 
uh, you know, things like that. And I do understand that, but I promise you, they won't be feeling like that at all. They are just desperate to help you. That's all. They're just desperate. And they are dealing with their own emotions around this. You know, their own worries, concerns, fears, um, frustrations, guilt, you know, um, feeling like they're responsible for you. Lots of different things, you know. So you won't be a burden at all. Um, you know, if you weren't around, you would leave a huge des devastation. Um, you really would. Um, okay, that's where I am at. They would all off be better off. I know you think that. I know that you think that. But remember, that is Anna. She's trying to destroy you. She really is. She wants you to think like that. She wants you to cut off from everybody because then you're easier to manipulate you're easier to control and you're easier to destroy at the end of the day okay so Stacy have you got any questions for me or I think you're the only one and I don't know whether Maureen's still with us um, have you got any questions for me and if anybody feels so weak yeah weak cold Tired, miserable, tortured, oh, just, I remember just, oh, not being hardly, I mean, I, I, I did actually work up to a certain point, you know, but then it just got too much. My head space was just, I couldn't think at all. I remember walking out one day, actually, of work because I just couldn't cope anymore. It got that bad. Um, I literally just walked out of work one day and then I actually had to get somebody to phone to say I'm really sorry but Kim's not there and she ain't coming back um, because I just couldn't I couldn't handle it and I couldn't handle the conversation to t say why I was why I was going although it was obvious you know and and the thing is is that at work people were commenting and that I wasn't really eating very much and they were commenting on the weight that I had lost and you know sort of um, yeah, it was really difficult, so I just walked out, and, um, you know, it, it, it sort of, it wasn't great, um, so yeah, I know, I know what you mean about, sort of, like, all those different things of how, and how it affects your life, but they are, you can get over those, you know, you can get